Vegas, I swear. Every place we dream about is kids. I'm taking flights down. Yeah, I swear. See the future is bright, though. It's bright. I was in the mirror practicing, trying to get my speech right. Like, I want to thank my mama. Also, I want to thank my supporters, and I'm thanking God. What's up, man? Welcome to the Dreams in Motion podcast. I am your host, once again, Curtis King Bradford. Uh, and today, man, I am extremely excited to introduce my guest, my brother, my friend, dear, near dear to my heart, man. We done been through the a lot of ups and downs, you know what I'm saying? We got a lot of a lot of history together, you know what I'm saying? And this guy, one of the legends, man, one of the gospel rap legends in, in my eyes, you know what I'm saying? And that's we could debate that all day, but in my eyes, and I've seen what this man has done uh, in the in the gospel industry world. I've been on tour with this particular person. I've learned from this person. This person helped me. Uh, taught me how to create the, uh, the, my first loops on the drum machine, on the MPC. Before I even knew anything about the MPC, he took me under his wings. And you know what I'm saying? I just want to give him his, his flowers today and introduce my host. I mean, my guest, I'm sorry. <laughs> Shouts out to Lil Rascal. All right, what up, Lil Rascal? What's, What's up, man? Long time. <laughs> yes, sir. Coming, man. Yes, sir. I time. called you Lil Rascal, but everybody it's, it's, know you by Rascal. It's branded. It's branded. Everybody yeah. called me Rascal out there, but it's yeah. branded. Lil yeah. Rascal. Yeah, yeah branded, man. man. I sure appreciate you coming, bro. Absolutely. You bro. know, it's, it's, it's been a long time coming to just sit down and have this conversation. Absolutely. Because uh, I talk about you behind the closed doors all the time. Absolutely. I Absolutely. give you your flowers all the time, but, yeah. you know, on this show, uh, it's dreams in motion because. I know I once had a dream mm-hmm. as, a, as a young kid growing up to be a music producer, to be in the industry, but you helped me put, put things in motion. Mm-hmm. And that's what I, I firmly believe, like we can all have a dream, but if you don't lock hands with someone that can help you put it in motion, you just gonna be sitting still, my that's brother. Right. Yeah. That's right, man. And so I just wanted to bring you on to talk about our history, to talk about what you're doing you know, in your life today, your history as a rap artist and mm-hmm. how you started mm-hmm. uh, to educate my audience, man, because a lot of them don't know. You know? Yeah. So who is Lil Raz? Let's start there. Well, Lil Rascal, uh, born on the scene for us hip-hop-wise, 19, what was it, 92, yeah. 93, 94, 95. I was a gangster rap artist mm. and uh, was doing real well. 95, dropped a record. It's called Like a Grown Ass Man. Yeah, forget the language, but that's the name of the album. And you good, you good. <laughs> and uh, did real well, man. It was our selling uh, Tupac. Thug Life album was out at the time. Master P was on the scene, but down here in the South, my, my album was out charting for a sale wise. And uh, right then, man, God was like, I, I don't, people say, God spoke to me. I ain't never, to this day, I've been serving God 25 years. I ain't never heard God speak audibly to me. Yeah, yeah. But even back then, I didn't know him. All my peace left. Mm. And so I'm out here doing shows. I think Relativity was one of the big labels at the time. Universal, a couple other labels was like calling uh, the our independent record label. And they was like, man, we interested, we interested. But, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but I had no peace. Mm-hmm. And, and a lot of people give their life to God when, like, your car flip over five times, you catch a venereal disease, something, when something happened. Right, right. But this was at a time where everything was looking good for me, bro. Mm. But I didn't, I had no idea what was wrong with me, man. You was freshly signed. Were yep. you signed? Yep, I was signed, doing okay. well. Everybody, like, entourage, you know, our label had, we show up with, Six folds back then, six folds with switches was big. Yeah, we yeah. had two or three of them. We show up with entourage, everything in line as far as what we know as superstardom in hip hop today. Man. And and I had no peace, none, man. And I had no idea what was wrong with me, man. And uh, I got invited to church. And when I walked into the church, man, it's like, Peace just flooded me. I don't even know what the preacher was talking about. Yeah, yeah. But when I walked in there, I knew I had to give my life to the Lord. Mm. And I didn't think he wanted, I didn't think uh, you could rap, right? Back then, it was 95, 96. I ain't thinking you could rap. Yeah. Rapping. Yeah. You can't rap for God, because everything back then was gangster, right? Yeah, yeah. But uh, I submitted myself to church, man, and God let me know that it wasn't the, the gift. It was the message that he wanted to change. Mm-hmm. And once he made that clear to me, man, that was 96. I never looked back. Why did you, um, 
Like, I know you said you didn't have any peace. Yeah. Because I could relate to that. Yeah. When I was, before the cameras came on, we were talking, we were talking about how that, yeah. people thought I was, like, how, well, how did you pivot from selling houses to, you know, leaving L.A. Right. with all these big producers? Right, like, right, right, Some of the bigger producers that have made hit records that I was around, right. you know, and they wanted me to stay around. Right, right. But I can relate to not having no peace. Right. While I was in it. You right. know what I'm saying? I didn't have right. any peace. I had highs and lows. Right. But ultimately, I still didn't have any peace. Uh, and I think for me, it was because I didn't, I never got to that point where I thought I should be mm -hmm. to, to provide. I've always wanted to be a provider, right. I wanted to provide financially. So for me, I think it was a little bit of, you know, God tugging in my heart to do something different. But I also think it was a, a lot of my flesh just mm -hmm. wanting to, to survive and yeah. pay bills. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 I don't have no peace because I yeah. can't pay my bills, too. Yeah. So what, what was it? Man. It's yeah. a distinction. The peace, when God talks to you, and, and again, I told people on, you know, I ain't never heard the audible voice of God, right? right? right. But that is the way he speak with you. Mm -hmm. When God, like, takes away your peace, or, or I don't know how he do it, whether yeah. he just block demons or, or he let them eat you up or whatever. Yeah. When he deals with your peace, you know it's him. Because mm. I know what you're saying, you could be like, just, you know, you, you don't have to believe in God and you could be somewhere and the vibe ain't right. Mm -hmm. And you're like, man, I ain't got no peace in here. That ain't necessarily God, but the peace of God, bro, you can tell it's God. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah. And at that time, I knew it was God in my life because I'm like, I'm looking around. I got women, weed, mm. record deal, everybody loving. I'm like, man, why ain't I satisfied? Mm. And mm. it just so happened that one person was like, the only person in my life was like, hey, man, come to church with me. None of that was coming from nowhere else. Wow. I'm like, this was your label mate? Yeah. Well, actually, it was New Wine, man. I was trying man, to avoid saying out, that Negro. Uh, name. <laughs> shouts out New Wine, though. Shouts <laughs> out New Wine, yeah. man. It's all good. But yeah. it was New Wine, man. Wow. Okay. I had met Wine like three weeks, maybe three weeks, maybe a month mm -hmm. in advance, mm -hmm. right? And uh, he was taking pictures in, one of, in front of one of the six folds that my label had. Yeah. And he was telling me, man, I do gospel rap. I was like, yeah, that's good, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he was like, Dude, let's keep in touch. Yeah. But I back then we weren't wasn't cell phones. We didn't have cell phones. Cell phones was this big, or you had the car phone in, in, in your car. Man, talk, <laughs> talk about it, man. <laughs> but uh, he was like, I ain't want to keep in touch with him because of what he did. Yeah. I was a gangster rapper. He talking about Jesus and all yeah. this. So it was corny back then. It was corny, bro. Yeah. And and I tell you the turning point. I was in Victoria, Texas. And if any of y'all Watching this, you know me, my album, my album like a grown ass man, had like a blue suburban on it. Okay. Stretch suburban. They, they wasn't stretching them back then. It was a made up stretch suburban. Mm -hmm. And because of that, a lot of people, gang affiliated people, thought our label was affiliated with Crips. Mm. And so I'm out here in Victoria, Texas, bro. I'm out here with these dudes. They cripping. We in the backyard, they drinking Blue MD. It's probably like 10 dudes back there. They all gang members, me and my producer, Tiger, at the time. And they just passing blunts. You got the blunt and the Blue MD just going around in circles, bro. Yeah. And I know it was God that spoke to me this time. Yeah. He say, look up. Look at these people. You don't know none of these dudes. Mm. If you lose your life back here, nobody going to even know where you are. Man, you know what I mean? You're telling me this. Bruh. Yeah, yeah. I got so scared, Kurt. Yeah. <laughs> I say, man, y'all take me home, man. <laughs> yeah. And they didn't. I, I woke up the next day and I came home and New Wine Car. It was Sunday. Mm. I came home on a Sunday, New Wine Car. Yeah. I knew what I was supposed to do. I knew what I was supposed to do then. I told him, hey, man, I'm going to go to church with you next week. Sheesh. And, man, that whole week it was like, man, I don't know if I'm doing what God want me to do. It was like, Battle, torment. Yeah, yeah. When I walked into church, bro, peace just flooded my soul. Mm, mm. And I say, man, this God calling me, man. Right in the middle of my career. Look like things finna pop. Yeah. God say this, though. He say, you won't leave anything on earth that you ain't gonna get back double. Mm. And in the afterlife, you know. Yeah. And of course, I ain't know all that. I just, I just knew, man, I couldn't, I couldn't continue to be a gangster rap artist, man. And, that, and you was only um, one album in. I was one album in, yeah. And successful album. Successful already, yeah. and you are already doing shows. Promoting. The album still, I stream all of my gospel albums. Wow. To this day, bro. 
Wow. That's crazy, man. It's crazy. And so when you get to church, obviously you're going through the process of giving your life to God. When was the point, what, what, what was the point where you said, okay, I'm going to start making gospel music with Wino? It, it was, Wine was, was a Christian rapper, but he had what you call, what I say, penitentiary rhymes, man. Yeah. Dudes in the, in the pen, they rap like 84 bars with no hooks, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I had to like teach him. I was teaching him how to rhyme, but I didn't, I didn't think uh, I was supposed to rap, man. And uh, went to a Sunday service and prophet came, yeah. chick. And she asked my pastor, could I, you know, could I speak, speak over it? Mm -hmm. And it was after the service, so this wasn't no, like the show thing. Y'all know y'all see on TV people hitting folk with hanging shit. I don't play with that. Don't play with the Holy Ghost. But yeah, yeah. to show that it wasn't for show, she did it after everybody was gone. And bro, she started prophesying in rhymes. She was like, God says, come out of the crowd and come into the clouds. And, and she just kept rhyming. And yeah. while she was doing that, that was God telling me, it's good for you to rhyme. Yeah, yeah. Just change the message. Mm. So from that point, I just, Hit the I ground running. It. Wow, man. I went at it, man. That's crazy. Do you still know that prophet? No, nope. like, don't remember to this day. That's crazy, man. Because yeah. I've so so after that situation, um, I, I want to know what kind of how how did Grape Tree come in? Because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pretty sure you starting a gospel rap. That's how you kind of led mm -hmm. you to Grape Tree Records. Mm -hmm. Okay, Grape, Grape Tree came into play. Uh, wine when he was taking those pictures in front of six four. It was for Heaven's Hip Hop Magazine. Okay. Which was a product of Grape Tree Records. Okay. And uh, Wine was trying to get a deal with Grape Tree Records. Mm -hmm. I had one more concert left, mm -hmm. mainstream, in Austin. Club booked me, they paid me in advance. In between the time they paid me, I'm, I'm like, say, nah, like, dang. Go out here and cuss these folk out no more, right? Yeah, Everybody at the label like, man, one more concert, you can do it, man, blah, blah, blah. So I, I said, man, I'm going to go do the concert, but I'm going to tell the people that I'm saying, man, I can't do this no more. So I go to Austin and Nolly comes to the concert. Nolly yeah. Williams is the owner of Grape Tree Rex. Okay. He don't know me from Adam, really. Him and Wine been congregating about being in the magazine. But this is his first time meeting me, right? Mm -hmm. So, I, it's a thousand people at the club, okay? And I tell the owner at the beginning of the, of the night, I said, man, I can't do a whole show, man. I'm saved. I can't do this material. No. <laughs> <laughs> and the owner- He didn't know like, the pages, too. Yeah. Oh. And I'm there, so he, he paid the rest. Mm -hmm. He was like, bro. He said, I understand, man, but you understand, like, two days ago, they had a shooting at the club down here. They gonna ride, tear my club up. I was like, bro, I understand. I can give you this money back yeah. and leave, or I'm gonna do what I gotta do. And the owner of the club was like, man, you do what you gotta do. And he jumped in his car and left, bro. He left his own club. No. Yeah. And you gave him the money back and he no, burnt off? No, he burnt off. Oh, I didn't give him You didn't get it? Okay, okay. He said, do what you got to do, and he left. He, he didn't know what was going to happen. Yeah. And so I got on stage, bro. It was like 1,000. I said 1,000. The yeah. uh, guy who booked the show said it was 1,800. Yeah. By the way, that's shots out Stan. Stan went on. He's, he uh, floor rider's manager now. Okay, yeah, I remember and I'm Stan. telling this whole story to floor rider about it. Last year, like November, I'm telling this whole thing. Yeah. Wow. Stand like, man, it was 1,800 people in the crowd. And so I go out on stage, bro, and I'm like, it was the first time I told my testimony. I ain't know what that was, though. Mm. I'm like, Roman stay like, I can't do this, y'all. I can't, can't be rapping gangster, man. Man, I gave my life to the Lord. You know, I'm Roman, and the people are like looking at me. <laughs> they stopped drinking. They just looking at me. And I did a song from the album called Thank God. Yeah. And after I done the song, bro, we just, me, Wine, and Nolly, and Nolly's wife, mm -hmm. we was together. We all just ran out the back of the club because we ain't know. That was it. I did the one song, Thank God, and I was like, man, I'm out. We ain't know if they gonna tear the club up or whatever. So we run out, jump in our cars, yeah. burn out. <laughs> me and Wine stay, uh, I think we had a uh, hotel. We meet Nolly in his uh, office the next day. Yeah. And Nolly was like, he said, man, I had a dream a mainstream rapper was going to turn gospel. 
Mm. And he say, in the dream, I seen gold. And he said, I thought it was a gold artist that was going to get a light to the Lord. But my album cover had my name wrote in gold letters. Mm. And he said, man, when I seen your album and I seen this was you in concert, he said, man, I believe God was speaking to me about you. Mm-hmm. And he was like, man, I want to sign you to Grape Tree Records. Mm. And I was like, bro, let's go. Because I can't do the gangster thing no more. Right. So that's how I got the Grape Tree. And uh, wow. he dropped a compilation, a Grape Tree compilation. And he sent, you know, he sent some loot down for me to record and produce it. And I created a song called Playtime Over. That was my first gospel song. So. Mm. And they, Grape Tree had the, the distribution and all that? They did. Man, he, he not he grinded from the ground level up. Mm-hmm. Man. He, uh, he didn't have distribution at first. Uh, I was like the fourth artist he signed. Okay. And the, and the four that came before me, they just was kind of like placeholders. Because none of them turned out to be anything yeah. bigger than, than what they were. So, so, so I was trying to explain this to my camera guy before you got here. When you were doing your thing in the gospel realm and Great Tree Records, mm-hmm. was that before, that was de- well before like the, the Lecrae's of this world. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right? Like, absolutely. They, they this, this 96, man. 90, uh, right, that's what I figured. This, this 96, man, ain't no internet. Ain't no, I mean, you. we cutting records on real. Oh, yeah. Ain't no flying hooks. <laughs> yeah. No auto No Pro tools. tools. <laughs> no Pro Tools. Yeah, man, that's when, crazy. When, when somebody gave me a beat, they had to give me a tape. Yeah. And if we wanted to record, you had to go to the studio and lay each instrument separately yeah yeah so it, it took hours to produce an album man because mm-hmm. each song had to be laid per instrument real time and it took days to do records back then man that's crazy yeah. I, I remember i don't know what year it was man and where you were at in your career with grape tree but i do remember coming to your apartment or your house mm-hmm. and and i remember seeing that NPC and how you had yeah. everything connected. Yeah. And bro, it blew my mind because yeah. like I was still trying to wrap my mind around. You know what's Kurt? You, you know yeah. what's crazy? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kurt? Yeah. I think that was for you. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think my setup was for you. Yeah. Because I never produced again. Yeah, that's crazy. I produced that one record, The Streets of White. Yeah. And I saw how difficult it was to produce and rap. Yeah. It pulls, it stretches your creativity too. Yeah, I remember mean, you telling me that. Yeah. yeah. I never produced again, man. Yeah. So that was meant for you. Yeah, that's crazy. I think the first beat I made on that was that How Real Is God to You. It's 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 still on the streets of White Album. Y'all can go check it out. Yeah. After that album, bro, somebody actually uh ripped me out from my uh my recording. But I, I sold my equipment. I never produced again. Never oh, wow. wanted to, bro. Wow. I why why did you get into producing in the first they, they just they had a budget for Producers? I, I, I got my producer when I came with Grape Tree, because he didn't give his life to the Lord, we kind of parted ways. Okay. And then I was like hustling for beats, man. And I have ideas myself, mm-hmm. right? Because I'm, I'm a music guy. When I ain't listening to rap, I'm listening to classical, mm-hmm. I like country, all that. So I hear old school samples, man. And that, I just got super excited at the time, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, bought equipment. And I, I went in. The mm-hmm. album was actually pretty good, but I know I'm a, I'm a writing artist. Mm-hmm. I know I'm a, I'm a wordsmith. Mm-hmm. And so I knew producing, even though I, I, I knew if I would have stayed in it, I would have got better. I knew that wasn't what God was calling me to do. Yeah, he wasn't you, calling yeah. me to produce You're you definitely a beast with that pen and them lyrics. Yeah, that's, that's what he called me to do, man. Yeah, so. as soon as my boy heard you, I uh, put him on you. He's like, oh yeah, dude, poetic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I said that's what he about, man. Yeah, we I was, was talking about that a couple days ago. We we was like, some people are melodic. Yeah, I'm poetic. Yep, it's more about rhythm with me. Yeah, you, you'll never catch me trying to sing on all the tunes on the track. Yeah. I might. Yeah. Kirk might can invent, uh, convince yeah. me to do it, but yeah. I'm more rhythmic, poetic. Yeah, I get that, man. Everybody yeah. got they strong. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That's that's one thing I always loved about collaborating. You know, yeah. like I feel like. Me coming into your life at that season, it was a good, it was a good collaboration to mm-hmm. help me see what I can be, you know, right. in, in that space. I, I never know what it did for you. I didn't learn it was your first time with NPC until t- later. You told me, man, that was the first time. Yeah. I didn't even know, bro. Yeah. I, and to this day, we just discovered this on your podcast, bro. That was set up for you. 
Yeah, that's crazy. God to think about. staged that because you needed to see that, you needed to experience that, and then he was like, "All right, yeah, enough of that." Now I get back. To oh you. yeah, <laughs> he, yeah, he gave me that. Yeah, because I remember telling my mom, I was like, man, listen, I got to go over here because, you know, I wanted to go back. Yeah. I kept like I always yeah. had the love for music, and people, you know, every time I talk to somebody on this show, they know who I am. Like basically, I, I always give them a piece of my story. Like yeah. I, I started yeah. playing drums when I was what five or six years old. Yeah. And it was just the sounds of the drums and how you can hit yeah. one sound, one drum. That's a gift, bro. Right? And I yeah. was like, man, I got to figure it out. You know what I'm saying? And I would, I would take, you know, the organ and keyboard in church and just play for as long as I could and make up stuff. Yeah. That was my yeah. track. Yeah. I wasn't recording nothing, <laughs> yeah. you feel me? Yeah. But I was playing the same thing over. Yeah. Over and over yeah. in different ways. That's yeah. a gift, man. Yeah. That's a gift. And so when I finally realized that, man, I can take what I'm hearing and loop that boy, mm-hmm. oh boy, that was like a whole nother beast came it's out of It's a gift, man. Yeah. And, and music is, is like one of the oldest professions, right? You know, the industry is kind of everywhere now. People are like, oh man, you can't make money selling music no mm-hmm. more. True and untrue, right? I believe because men's greed, we wreck stuff, but music is never gone like, it's, it's valuable. Mm-hmm. And, and the way we just pass it around and stream it, we treat it like it don't have value. Mm-hmm. But the truth is, 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 it's no better way to teach somebody Ooh, something than through speak, music. Man. Speaking on treating it like it no value, boy, that's why I feel like when I met you and I, when we, we started working, you know, I got you put me on my first tour with you. Yeah, yeah. We got history, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Oh yeah. oh We're going yeah, to Louisiana. Man. I think yeah, that's where we yeah. was going. Yeah, yeah. Man, yeah, I was getting to, right. you know, get on the stage and stuff with you, man. Like, all that was beautiful. But what I, when I started finding my frustrations was with the people and how they treat your gift. It's uh, like, you, it's hard to <laughs> see bread, right? I, I think that's <laughs> why, and because my mama was saved, right? Yeah. And I think that's why God allowed me to stay outside of the kingdom. Yeah. Because I brought that, that energy, that gangster rap energy, that gangster rap feel, attitude. I brought that to my music. I couldn't have got that out the kingdom mm-hmm. because when I started rapping for God, I'm like you. I'm thinking the church is going to love this, man. Here it is, somebody not killing and, and banging chicks or whatever. We talk about it. They hated me, bro. Mm. And in 96, they, <laughs> they're talking about the church. The church, they hated me, man. They say rap was the devil and this ain't God. And this, and I'm yeah. like, yeah. I was nominated for a double award, which is the highest award you could get in the Christian industry. It's yeah. like the Grammys to the Christians. Yeah. They, man, check this out. Man. The dubs, please don't take this out on my future artists. But y'all did this, y'all know it's true. It was five, six nominees, right? Mm-hmm. Five of them. Four of them were grape tree artists. Mm-hmm. The fifth one was an ex grape tree artist. Mm-hmm. And the sixth one was a group from the UK called Worldwide Mr. Tribe. Okay. It had a song called Jumping in the House of God, Jump Up, Jump. Yeah. You know they won the award, right? Okay. <laughs> Out of six of us, and Grape Tree was an all hip hop label. Mm-hmm. And this is best rap album of the year. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm at the dub, suited my wife dressed up. I'm like, because there's so many of us nominated, I'm like, I don't care who win. I'm finna run up on this stage. Yeah. We did it. You know what I'm saying? I just left Gangsta Rap, bro. I'm nominated for the highest Christian rap award in the country. Yeah, that's Even big. if they don't give it to me. We, I'm still running up here because it's going to be a Grape Tree artist that's going to get it. They say the one name that ain't. And the winner is the Worldwide Message Tribe. Yeah. And then they like, well, they can't be here today. <laughs> wow. I'm like, man, bro, do you realize I just left the gangster, not just gangster rap, my whole lifestyle. I'm surrounded by drugs and dope and yeah. all this crime, jail. I give my life to the Lord. I start rapping for the Lord. And three years later, I'm getting the highest award in the country. And then they get to somebody that don't even care. Politics. I never, from that point, man, I never, I never rapped again for fanfare mm. or the public or man's approval. I just, I put all my, my gangster energy into the gospel and I just became who I am today. Yeah, and, I feel that. Which is probably a, a big reason why I could be more popular because I'm rough. If y'all listen to gangster, I mean rap, uh, gospel rap, Christian, 
you can line up about 10 Christian rap boys and you listen to mine, and they like, that kind of rough with it. It's street, it's, it's, it's mm -hmm. thug, it's, it's gangster. Mm -hmm. And while other ones are like, sound more contemporary or, or the lighter message, you know. I believe the church had a hard time accepting Mm. Who I was. That's 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 a long story to say. No, I know that's the, even know in the music true. industry, the Christian music industry, they was like, we don't know about this. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> but here it is, twenty five years later, man. And it's like one of the biggest things. It, it, hip hop came took took over all music. Yeah. And I saw all genres, and yeah. and Lecrae comes up, and they give him every award now. Yeah. Everything. Lecrae win. Lecrae win. I'm like, well, y'all show do a brother bad around. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but you know what? I feel like they. They probably had. They probably figured out a way to um, monetize it finally. Right. Because I remember being a, a Christian counselor at this uh, camp called Pine Cove, mm -hmm. and and I went there to do a half a summer there as a as a Christian counselor, where I actually helped mentor junior high kids mm -hmm. and just kids that were younger than me. And um, when I get there, my mind went because. As soon as I get there, all I see is flame everywhere. Yeah. This is a white, the whitest camp. Yeah. You feel me? Like, hey, I'm like yeah, the only yeah. two black dudes yeah. that, that yeah. are counselors at this camp. Yeah. But I felt like at that season of my life, when I was running away, trying to figure out the industry, if I wanted to be in the industry, yeah. and my mom's wanted me to preach the word. Right. My yeah. mom wanted me in that pulpit. Boy, yeah. I know she did. Still to this day, <laughs> yeah. she won't yeah. preach that word, son. Preach the gospel. Yeah. Yeah. But and I knew, I felt God calling me in that way, too. But I was a little rough as well. Yeah, yeah. Like I remember being at church camp. I mean, at, at this at this at this camp, telling kids real stuff. And, yeah, and the yeah. counselor pulled me to the side. Man, you know, we probably need to put you at the camp in the uh, in the hood. Man, I, I just learned something. <laughs> I just learned something this year. Mm -hmm. I was talking to a friend of mine. His name uh, Dooney the Priest. He, he rap artist out mm -hmm. of Dallas, and he made a song called "Pull Your Pants Up," where he talk about. You know, the guy said, you pull your pants up. And it, it went big in Dallas. And he wound up on the Quad Fire Tour. Okay. If you never heard of the Quad Fire Tour. It's like one of the biggest YouTube uh, uh, conferences. And they, they send it around the nation. And, okay. Is it a Christian conference? Yeah, it's a Christian conference. Okay. It's big, huge, right? Predominantly white, though. Mm hmm And uh, they put Dooney on there. And, and they told him, man, don't, don't do the... Uh, Pull your pants up song because that's not something we deal with, man. He told me that story this year and it it just clicked to me. That maybe it wasn't a dislike for me, it was just a lot of Christian music is more white oriented. And, and, and it's you got Christian music, you got gospel music. Mm -hmm. Black people do things. gospel music, yeah, right? Exactly. They don't love rap either though. Mm -mm. And the Christians are like white. And the dub is more white centered and so. Yeah. A lot of Grape Tree music was, was ex-gangsters, man. Mm -hmm. and so they probably like didn't understand this because they was like, this is not something we, we, have, we deal with in exactly. our neighborhoods. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, but it's like, you know, going back to the Pine Cove, it was owned by a white man. And this man would, when I've learned the business, this man would pay for all of Flame's albums. Mm -hmm. Well, however many he mm -hmm. can purchase from Flame, he'll buy them mm -hmm. and so that he can give them to the kids at right. the camp. Right. And so that Flame wife was his tour manager. Uh -huh. And so his wife was breaking it down. Like when we was talking, she was like, yeah, I handle all the business and they, yeah. they book us here every summer. Yeah. And, it's <laughs> like, you feel, and I started yeah. thinking like, man, see these white people, they, they move. They gonna different. move. They gonna yeah. They, they gonna figure different. out a way to put money in <laughs> your pocket and they, they support man. Right. They support man. I think uh, black people. It's a bittersweet. I don't think we always are financially able to support. And yeah. then when we do, you know, we got bad habits, man. Fire sticks and, and, and yeah. bootlegging and all that, bro. I like nah, man. Y'all killing us like that, yeah, man. man. I can't do the fire stick thing or bootleg because I'm like that's another artist, man. Probably at the crib. Or on the studio floor, sleep. Yeah. He need me to buy this, man. Yeah, he exactly. need me to watch this movie and for money, don't, man. People don't be looking at it like that, man. I, <laughs> I told a, a youngster the other day, he was like, man, uh, how much would you charge me to do an EP with me? And I was like, to be honest with you, man, I ain't even in that space no more. I, yeah, I don't even yeah. have a price for you. Yeah. I said, if you if you dope and it's something that, that moves me, and I'm probably just going to hop in that with you and let's create it. But right, if right. I ain't feeling it and, right. it and it don't push me to go hop on that keyboard, right. I ain't really got time for it. You right. feel me? Like, I wish you the best, though. Right. But youngster looked at me and said, you know what, Kurt? 
man, I'm going to just go to YouTube because I can get free beats on YouTube, you know, <laughs> and, and I can create me an EP and call it like a, a mixtape and shoot these producers don't even know. And I said, bro, and I said, youngster, that's exactly why I do what I do now. Because <laughs> he was asking me, how you get into selling homes? I said, I said, because of people like you. I said, hey, boy, he laughed so. I said, bro, you got to understand, bro, these producers are putting their beats out there so that you can hear them. Yeah. But they're hoping that you will not only stream it, but you will come do business with and, them. And pay them some money. Yeah, them. man. And it's like these days, like producers, I mean, I put it like this. Producers, we spend more money than rappers. Right. We gonna go out and buy equipment. equipment we gonna go time. buy the right. things that we need to make right. our stuff sound better. Right. But yet, the rappers come in wanting to sell their talent. Right. And which I get too, because it takes two. Right. But man, we gotta pay for this equipment too. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We gotta right. get this done. And so it's like, right. I just didn't feel like at, the, at that season of my life, people were taking the, the craft serious enough for I, me to I live off of. I understand it, man. This, the new generation, and I try not to be the grumpy old man. Yeah. Man, but <laughs> <laughs> the new generation is like, bro, I don't need nothing. I can sit here, make my beat, record, video, and then upload to the world. And I be telling the new dudes, man, you got to go out here and touch people physically. Yeah. You, I don't care how many followers you got. You're going to have to physically get out here and touch people. Yeah. And I realized something else. It's easy for me to, to detect or see who's experienced as an artist. If, if you send me two artists and you say these two new dudes, man, because I, I run Grape Tree Records now, I'm the CEO of Grape Tree, and you tell me, hey, man, I want you to sign one of these two dudes. My first test is going to be, all right, rap, rap to people in here. Mm. The one that does it and is not or least nervous, because we all get nervous. We're never going to beat that. But the one that's least nervous, I know he's the one that's ready. Mm -hmm. Because you can be bold as heck in front of a camera in the room by yourself. Mm -hmm. But the minute I put you in front of people. Mm, yeah, that's a different beast. Yeah. Man, I don't know. I ain't really feeling it in here. Nah, you ain't ready. Yeah. You ain't ready because that's, at the end of the day, like you say, rappers, you got to be able to put your talent out. If the beat stop, can we just clap? And you go for it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If yeah. it take a beat or you want these whisper rappers or somebody that, you know, every line we got to punch you in in the studio, you ain't going to make it. Yeah. You ain't going to make it because I believe us as rappers, we have to pay too. We got to pay y'all and then you yeah. can't cheat the life of an artist, man. Mm. You can't, as an entrepreneur, you can't cheat entrepreneurship, man. Mm -hmm. People be like, oh, man. I started my business working for Kurt. And while I got time, I just do my business and I do Kurt. You're cheating entrepreneurship mm -hmm. because you can't create something of value stealing Kurt's time, right? Mm. If Kurt hired you for eight hours, but you stealing two or three hours to work on your business, you're cheating the entrepreneurial process, man. Mm. You, you, at one point in time, you gotta say, you know what, man? Kurt, you pay me a good check, but I got to make this thing happen, even if you starve, mm. even if your lights out, your phone out, eventually you got to sell out mm -hmm. to what God told you to do. Mm -hmm. and, and I explain it to people like this. You ever read in the Bible, uh, after Cain killed Abel, Adam had Seth, and Seth had all these kids, and he had one called Enoch. Mm -hmm. and, he, and the Bible say Enoch walked with God, and then he was no more. Mm -hmm. Like, he never died. It's just like, he, him and God was walking together, and then he was just gone. I'm like, God, why you put that in the Bible? Mm -hmm. Why we care? Mm -hmm. He don't even talk about the dude, but it's a principle. It's, it's not that his, his physical life, God is explaining a, a spiritual principle to us. Mm -hmm. Kurt, you might sell houses with the dreams of being a producer. So you spend your eight hours selling houses, you come home. And you get with God, you say, God, I'm a producer. I with God, like, yeah. You know, one day, Kurt, you're going to be a, a platinum producer. And you sell your houses the next day. You come back the next day. You're spinning God, but you're not here with God no more. God then moved you over here. Not only are you going to be a platinum producer, Kurt, people are going to know you. You're going to have trophies. You go sell houses, you come back, you're a little further over. Mm -hmm. Till eventually, you go so far with God that you can't go back. Mm. 
I said, okay, Kurt, we just spent all this time together. And I done invested and told you all this. You can't go back to selling the house. Mm. You got to keep going this way. It's the eating up principle. You keep walking with God, and, he, and, and if you're not connected to what, what you're supposed to be doing, you keep walking with God till you get so far, mm -hmm. you can't go back no more. Mm -hmm. You're like, man, I'm not a relative. I can do it. Mm -hmm. It's the eating up principle, bro. Man, I, uh, it's crazy you say that, because um, that's kind of where I feel like I am with the things that I'm, I'm feeling called to. Yeah. Like, even right here. I and feel like I had to start this, like it was like God was on my neck about it. Like <laughs> every show, you're taking another step. Yeah, and you're gonna look back. It ain't, it ain't nothing like, cause, cause we were scared back in the days. It's like, man, I gotta, I gotta stop eating to do it, man. Ain't nobody eating. But it's not like that with God. God will give you perfect peace, man. Mm -hmm. But you, you take steps, and then you gonna look up one day, and you are gonna be like. Man, it's too far to go back. Yeah, yeah, to man. To be a realtor, man. You said, you said something earlier, though, I wanted to, you know, transition into. You said that uh, you are now the owner of Grape Tree Records, because we, we talked about how you started in the, go in the gangster rap mm -hmm. uh, with that record label, put out, the, put out one album, and then you transitioned into going to church and, for the first time and giving your life to, Lord, to the Lord met, and met New Wine, mm -hmm. which is Wino. Um, and, and then you hooked up with Grape Tree Records, put, started, you started putting out multiple albums. Mm -hmm. um, what was the transition from being an artist under Grape Tree? Because I know your, your story is, you know, it can go, we can go all day with your story, but right. what was that uh, transition from going from the artist of Grape Tree Records to now in 2023, the CEO of Grape Tree, Grape Tree Records? When, when it was about 2004, 2005, the MP3 came. Mm -hmm. Naps, they start ripping CDs and just uh, sharing music, right? Mm -hmm. Sent Grape Tree out of business. At the time, we had a major deal with EMI. Okay. We wasn't moving the units like we like we needed to. And Nolly explained this in the interview not too long ago. We we were so big back then on going mainstream. Man, this church ain't feeling me. I need to go mainstream. That we, unlike the white Christians, we didn't get support from the church to go mainstream. We thought we could just go out mainstream and they were just going to buy and sell, but mm -hmm. uh, we didn't do well. EMI dropped us in that time, the MP3s came, so Nolly went bankrupt. Mm. And he just walked away. He walked away from the company. At the time he had like 18 artists. Uh, we was the number one Christian rap label in the world, man. And uh, product, uh, warehouse full of product, wow. hardware that's not being ordered no more. Mm -hmm. Now they walked away and the logo just went dead Man. in like 30 years and, and I had to keep going. I knew God had called me to rap so I started doing my own. I started my own co uh, label called Javo Records mm -hmm. and I kept moving as an individual artist. Yep. And uh, just, just last year, God spoke to my heart. He said, Man, if I give you a vision, does it die with a man? Mm. Anything you get from God is forever. Right. And I was like, nah. And he was like, look at the logo, y'all. Pick it up. And I was like, I can't pick the logo up with not Nolly, so I'm going to do New Grape Tree. Mm -hmm. And I started my New Grape Tree campaign about a year ago. And then, like, 10 months into the campaign, Nolly came with a press release. Mm -hmm. I'm going to restart Grape Tree. And I'm like, Nolly, you can't do this. We're going to collide. And so I put guns on Instagram, told him, you better not. not. And <laughs> Damn. No, we had a meeting. And uh, he was like, Ras, I ain't going to do it without you. He was like, man, we just didn't talk. I can't restart Grape Tree without you. He started trying to, he, did he know you had started New Grape Tree? Yes. I had texted him and said, Nolly, <laughs> man, he was like, man, I know you start New Grape Tree. Uh... I plan on rebirthing Grape Tree. And I'm like, nah, you've been saying that for years, man. Before you do, let's talk, because I don't want to conflict with you. Yeah. And then I'm coming home from one of my daughter's track meets, and people b blowing my horn. Hey, man, Rat, Nolly say he rebirthed the Grape Tree. And I'm like, no way, no way, no way. So I had like a 
Instagram battle with him. <laughs> <laughs> I add him out. How you gonna start right with you? Whatever I mean, you, you know, I'm yeah. putting guns on the cover. You better just get gangster with it. <laughs> <laughs> Tripping. People like Raz, what you doing with me? And not he called me, bro. Yeah. We just laughed it out. Oh, okay. He like Raz. I don't care about that time, man. We'll, yeah. we'll get in the interview and just make fun of it. Yeah, yeah. But he was like, man, I, I wasn't. He said I had no plans on doing it without you. Okay. And then he came and told me, he said, man, God told me I wasn't the CEO of the company, you was. Yeah. And he said, man, I just want to be chairman. And you just tell me, run it. So so now, that's dope, man. So now, would you say you successfully uh, signed any artists yet, or are you still got your eyes on I, I signed Kenny Ken, shots out Kenny Ken. We shot, we signed Kenny Ken. Okay. His album will be out uh, in November. Okay. I mean, not November, but uh, his single will be out in November album out in January. Okay, nice. Well, he's he's the first official sign. We got Zig Madison, got Kobe J. But but like you were saying earlier about how you deal with artists who's asking you to produce, I don't put pressure on artists. Mm -hmm. Artists will come to me and say, Rest, I feel like I'm supposed to be down Grape Tree. I'm like, good, I need an album. Like, well, man, I'm seeking God right now. I'm saying, seek God as long as you want. Mm -hmm. I don't care. You you part of the camp, mm -hmm. but when it's time to go, just bring me an album. Mm -hmm. You can do the rest. Yeah, and so I don't put the pressure on. So we got like three, four, about four artists in the wing. They just kind of like mm -hmm. enjoying the fact being down with Grape Tree and, and getting their stuff together, man. So. Man, I um I want to backpedal while I while I still have a time. What do you think it was like in your in in your upbringing that made you want to chase? It? rap like were you always because I, I know i gave you a piece of my story mm -hmm. when i was young I, my mom had, had me on that front row of church yeah yeah <laughs> that was my story my mom yeah. you know saying i, yeah. I helped i watched my mom go from the streets to yeah you feel me and, it, and she brought me with her that's a blessing so that, that was a blessing so yeah. i was always in the church you know yeah. watching the process and and that's when i felt like music was part of my yeah. my calling you know yeah. one of the things that god gifted me with because i have learned over the years yeah we put so much pressure on our purpose. Right. When it, you know, my purpose could, part of my purpose has been where I'm at in my job. Right. You right. know, I, I've been the minister at my job so right. many times. You feel me? God, God do everything. Man. Yeah, yeah. I like to say that, man. God does everything. Man. Right, right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm at the point now where I know from being in the church, kind of mm -hmm. like, oh, that I got a gift in music. Mm -hmm. Like it didn't just... Yeah. That's where it started for me. Yeah. You feel yeah. me? Because my grandma played piano, sing, yeah. my aunt sing, yeah. my mama sing. Yeah. So that's where it started. But for you, I'm yeah, curious. Yeah, it was, it like, was no rap. It was no rap when I was young, man. Mm. I'll tell you exactly what happened. Uh, I used to be fascinated by poetry, though. Okay. You know, uh, I used to like poetry time in English. I wasn't a writer or a reader, man, but I, I used to like rhyme schemes and rhythm. Mm -hmm. And uh, But I always been an artist. I could clay wheel, mold, I can mm. do all that, draw, paint. Okay, okay. I do all that. I've been an artist since Before rap. Birth. Gotcha, I gotcha. I already knew I was an artist. It was no rap though, right? So when I graduated school, uh, I, I began to go to UHD downtown, mm -hmm. University of Houston downtown, and pursuing art. And I had a uh, Floyd Newsom, he's still there, art teacher, director, shots out Floyd Newsom. He used to, uh, had a top floor of the UHD main building, and he bring up naked model. models. They would strip, and we paint them. Really? It was part of the class. Oh, wow. But while we was doing it, he playing like gangsta. Okay. And I'm like seeing him drawing naked models listening to hip hop. And I'm like, that's hip hop thing, right? By this time, you know, all the rappers out, Q, NWA, and all that. Yeah. And so I'm getting more into rap, and I hear Ice Cube like, you know, do I look like a role model to a kid looking up to me? Life ain't, and I'm looking at NWA Ice Cube. I'm like, man, these dudes from the hood, yeah. but they getting the voice yeah. and music. Yeah. And I'm like, he telling you he ain't no role model. And we still love him, bro. Right. <laughs> Straight up. So I'm like, man, bro, I want to do this, man. And so I chose the art form of music mm. where it was in you. I chose to go. Mm. I could have been any type of artist, but I said, you know what, I'm gonna get into music. And I 
And I dropped out of college, man, to be a rap boy. That's crazy, man. Like, and that was the beginning of my journey, man. That's crazy because we we even we had similar stories. Yeah. Even though I knew when I got to college, yeah. you know, I don't know if I ever told you this, but I, I sold my first beat to Selena brother. Ah. The, 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 the singer Selena. The singer Selena? Yes. Wow, bro. So, like, wow. I was in a MIDI class at Stephen F. Austin University. Yeah. Because I was, I was there on a band scholarship. Yeah. You know, because, you know, I was on a drum line yeah. and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Like, Y'all already know him. He probably <laughs> didn't had a million episodes by now. Yeah. yeah. Kurt is one of the most... You and Boudreaux, I tell people this all the time. It's funny you say you talk about me, but I talk about him all the time. Yeah. Y'all are geniuses to me. Yeah. And people hear you say, oh, man... He say Kurt a genius, and they think that's just like slang, yeah. saying you smart or you good. No, I actually believe you and Boudreaux are two people God put in my life. Or y'all are musical geniuses. Today, Thanks, man. That yeah. you can like these dudes just cook up stuff, and I'm like, look at the mind of this dude, bro. Yeah, man. I think it is, but that's what I'm saying. It, it goes back to church, band, mm -hmm. orchestra. You know, I played in the orchestra band. You mm -hmm. know, in high school. And I used to have to do a lot of multiple, multiple different things with percussion, right? Mm -hmm. But when I got that scholarship to go to Stephen F. Austin on, and play on that drum line, I didn't like how buttoned up it was. I was the one that wanted to dance with my drum. Yeah. I should have went to Prairie View. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, wanted to make, I wanted to make some gangster beats, you know? Yeah. And Brandon so, I, yeah, all yeah. of my band directors was like, ah, it's too much, Curtis. It's, you know, like, you, I would act, like, I'd be in the stands. And I add stuff to the drums. Like, it, it'll be a piece, and the band director will be there with his proper butt <laughs> doing something. And I'll always add a little something to it. And so that's why, like, when Drumline came out, boy, yeah. they, so you many understand. people called me. Yeah. They said, boy, you should have been in this yeah, movie because you you've been doing this you since understand. junior high. <laughs> like, I've been taking over the bands, bro. And so when I get to college, yeah, yeah. I, had, I found out that there was a media class where you can hook a keyboard up to a computer. Mm -hmm. This is my first time mm -hmm. knowing that you can hook a keyboard up to a computer and record your music into a software. Mm -hmm. So my homie told me about the class. He said, bro, you need, cause I'm still at the, in college beating yeah. on the table. Yeah, yeah. I'm, if I see a piano, like yeah. I created my, everywhere I would go brass, I would create a group. Yeah. So in college I had, I won competitions and talent yeah, shows. Yeah. Cause I, I saw two dudes singing in the commons area college yeah. one day. Yeah. I said, man, y'all cold, man. Yeah. But can y'all sing on this? Yeah, and, yeah. and that was his piano in the middle of the commons in yeah, the college. Yeah. I'm the guy hopping on the piano, playing yeah. some melodies. And before you know it, they'll come over to the uh, piano and start singing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Shouts out to my boy Jeremy. Yeah. And, and before you know it, people will start coming around like, yeah, man, y'all yeah. boys jamming. It was yeah. just the piano and me beatboxing. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And them boys singing. <laughs> yeah. And before you know it, that, that led into them telling me, it's funny, man. Man, Kurt, you. You be doing all that on the piano, but you need to learn how to, man, we need to loop that. Yeah, yeah. You know, like loop yeah, it. Yeah, it was and, that, and that's when they introduced me to that media class, man. I walked into that class, bro. I had my own keyboard that, that I took from my high school, from mm -hmm. my band. I'm sorry to my director, but I, I stole it at the time. Yeah. <laughs> and I kept saying, I kept telling them, I kept telling everybody, yeah, my band director, let me use this. <laughs> man, I graduated and took it, man. I feel bad, <laughs> man. I feel, I, but since then, I done gave it back to my band. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I done did a lot for my, for my high school. But yeah, bro, yeah. I had this keyboard that was unique. Crazy. Yeah. Nobody in the class had it. Yeah. So I hooked mine up and I started using some of the sounds out of that keyboard to create yeah. my beats. And everybody kept wondering like, man, where you get that sound? Yeah. I said, well shoot, my keyboard, I got something yeah. different. Cause in the classroom, yeah. every keyboard was the same. Yeah, the same. It was like right, a big right. circle right, of keyboards right. and computers. Right. I come in that juggle with my keyboard, hook it up. My director looked at me, I mean the teacher, he was like, man, say, that's what, you, what you're creating is impressive. <laughs> and I, that's when I was like, man, appreciate it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But and a student ended up having a relationship with Selena's brother. Uh, a student, man. Yeah, and he yeah. told me, he said, man, my, uh, my friend, uh, he didn't never tell me it was Selena's brother. Yeah, he was yeah. just saying, man, my friend, uh, AB, he, he has a record label he's starting yeah. in, in uh, Corpus Christi. Wow. And I was like, oh, yeah. I didn't know nothing about record labels and all that at yeah. the time. You feel yeah. me? But he's like, you should bounce your songs. You know how the teacher taught us how to bounce them down? He was yeah. like, when you bounce them down, send them to me and I'm going to send them to him, man. Yeah. I was like, cool. So they, yeah. I, that's when I first learned how to bounce a beat down right, and right, email right. it. Man, right. I sent this man these beats, bro. I get a call three days later. On my, on my, I had one of them sidekick phones back yeah, in the yeah, day. Yeah. I answered the phone. Dude told me, 
hey man, I'm AB and you know I got this rec record label and we want to buy some of these beats from you. Yeah. And that he, long story short, the man wired me three thousand dollars. Wow. He put the number on it. I yeah. didn't even ask him because right. I didn't know what to charge. Right. He put the number on it, sent me three thousand, man, and from there on I dropped out. I yeah. said, man, I'm the Kanye. You found out what you're supposed to be doing. Uh, boy, I'm <laughs> going to be Kanye West. Like I said, man, if I can make $3,000 off these three beats. You can make a living off that. Oh, man, I can make a living. Yo, from there, I love. you sitting here talking, man. This mm -hmm. is, I feel like Lord is speaking to me, bro, because, you know, we both two people. And I believe a lot of the mainstream artists, yeah. their producers, they car. Yeah. I don't know how you just see New York. I couldn't. Yeah. Right? I couldn't, bro. I I. I don't see how somebody say, oh, man, man, you ain't have to just give it all the way up. You could have, you know, just went to start going to church. And I'm like, bro, I couldn't. Yeah. It was pressed on me so hard, I couldn't. But I believe a lot of the mainstream artists and producers of Kyle, it's just, we're two people he just wouldn't let in the music industry. Yeah, that's man. very true, man. I yeah. don't know why. People are like, oh, man, you would have got lost. I don't know. That ain't true. God can find anybody. Yeah. Right? Ain't nobody too lost or, or can go too far for God. Yeah. So people want to, you know, they want to say that, man, oh, you probably wouldn't, oh, you might not survive. You wouldn't be here today. I don't, yeah. I don't know that. Man. Yeah, people tell me that too. He wouldn't let me go in the mainstream, bro. He, he wouldn't. I know you in L.A., bro. Trust me, I know. Right. Ain't, ain't nobody overlooking your talent. Right, right, right. That's God's thing, nah. Yeah, it was it, it was it was definitely protection because I feel yeah. like when the way that started, you would think like most people would think every time something good happens, it's a blessing from God. Yeah. I don't truly believe that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Everything good, they yeah. don't mean and, that and God, God blessed yeah. you. You know what right, I'm saying? Like, right, right. and so when that opportunity came, you know, I thank God for it because it, it helped me go into entrepreneurship mode. Mm -hmm. And I got a chance to start traveling. I took that three thousand, invested mm -hmm. in it, half of it into a, a music conference in Miami, mm -hmm. where I met m more producers like me. Right, that right. was my first right. play. You know, right. Y two. We talk about Y two. Right, my boy right, Y two. Right, right. Me him and I was yeah. doing uh, producers conferences like that. Right. And we was in New York and Miami, yeah. man. And I remember they used to have a lot of those. Yeah, man. Jack the rapper. All this right, stuff, right. Man. And that's where I met my first big artist, Y Club. Yeah. Me and Wycliffe became cool, man. Yeah, I don't know if yeah. I even told told nah, you the story, nah, but yeah, he mean, I played some beats for him in Miami at, when I was out there and yeah. he uh it was just this one beat I kept thinking like he would love and man he he ended up sitting in his uh it was a drop top, some sort of I don't know if it was a Bentley Wood, but it was drop top. He he wanted me to play him the beats while I was there because he yeah. asked me. I yeah. pulled up on him, what up, Wycliffe, what it do? Yeah. I was on like a scooter, we <laughs> yeah. rent scooters out in Miami and yeah. I rolled up on him, what it do? Oh, I club. He said, what it do? <laughs> you know how he ain't from yeah. Texas. Yeah. And so he asked me, he's like, man, what is what is what it do? <laughs> I say, well, we from Texas, man. Like when yeah. we say what's up, it's what it do. It's what's what good? Do. Yeah. How you how you doing? Yeah. He's yeah. like, oh, I like that. And he yeah. started, what it do? He started singing it like <laughs> like a melody. What it, it's like he was gonna steal our slang and create a song. <laughs> And so he, t he asked me what I did. I was like, man, I'm going to produce something at this producer's event right next door here. Because he was in a hotel and the producer event was in another hotel. Yeah. And I said, I'm over here, but I saw y'all just wanted to introduce myself. And he was like, and I was for the lead, bro. Because yeah. this is my first time learning how to network. Yeah, I ain't yeah. want to get on dude nerves. Yeah, I just wanted yeah. to tell him, man, I'm a fan. I yeah, love what yeah, you're doing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> bro, I'm about to leave and one going to tell him nothing that I yeah, make beats. I, I, I know, I feel you, You bro. feel me? Yeah. So he asked me, he said, bro. You ain't got no music? Yeah. <laughs> what? I had the, I had all my. I said now one thing about me, bro. Speaking yeah. of dreams in motion. Yeah. I was always prepared. Right. I was always hustling. I always right. I had right. I right. had about twenty hip hop CDs with beats. Right. Right. I had twenty R and B. I segregated. I segregated right. it. Right. I had a CD for R and B, and then mm -hmm. I had another CD for pop music. Mm -hmm. And man, I pulled them out. I gave him all the CDs. He was like, oh, he was it, he was impressed. Yeah. He said, well, we fit to pop it in now, yeah. boy. <laughs> he popped that CD in. He started jamming the beach, man, and it was just this one beat that I had sampled from these New Orleans uh, trumpets. And uh, there was around the time when uh, that Katrina happened, mm -hmm. and you know the hurricane and all of that. Yeah. And so he said, man, this sounds like some uh, a, a tribute to the New Orleans tragedy out there. Mm -hmm. the and mm -hmm. he started singing, down in the water, people are drowning. Yeah. And then he started incorporating that with what to do. Yeah. <laughs> like basically saying, what we yeah. going to do? What yeah, to do? Yeah, Bro, yeah. He was, right in front of me, he was yeah. creating a song to my beat. And I feel like in that moment, I'm, I'm where I need to be. Because like, right. I'm growing in this moment. Like right. I, I'm watching right. a multi-platinum artist make a song to my beat and right. it was that it was good enough 
right. for him to say, bro, give me your number. Let's stay in contact with each other. You know what I'm saying? Right, and we, right. we did. But, you know, long story short, he never got a chance to put that record out. He went through his own personal things with his right. marriage. He ended up going back to producing more than yeah. doing that solo album. So I never made that album. Yeah. But I say all this to say, throughout my career, yeah. I've got to these certain God, levels. God, yeah, God and it's threw, like, he threw breadcrumbs, man. Yeah. You know, and I don't know what he gonna do with you now, man. Uh, I know you're doing well as far as with the, your other businesses, man. Yeah. I know it's something more, man. Yeah. And uh, I go to Lakewood, Joe, Joe Austin, is, uh, he famous for saying this, man, God always does his best work next. Mm. He never done his greatest work in your life in the past. Mm -hmm. Whatever he getting ready to do, Next is going to be bigger than whatever he done in the past. Right, man. right. I, I believe that, man. I accepted I adapted it because, yeah. you know, I've came a, a long time. I've came a long ways, but I'm like, God, I don't feel tired. Yeah. I, I feel like I can stand on a hundred more stages. I feel like I can make a hundred more albums. It's crazy. Yeah. I, it's in me. You know, it's in me like that. You know, and, and you know, some people don't want to let go. It, it ain't my heydays with me, you know. Yeah. I don't know if I had my heydays, but, but when I was like red hot, it was cool. Mm -hmm. But I ain't trying to get back there. I'm, I'm good being the OG just and making solid music. Keep challenging the new dudes, man. Mm. That, you know, 50-year-old dude dropped this album, man. I, gotta, I can't let this old dude I do. Mm. I'm good being in that position, bro. Yeah, yeah. But God always do his best work next, man. Yeah, I believe that, brother. And, I, that's, and it's crazy you say that because I'm going to end with, you know, asking you, where do you see yourself, and you just said a little piece of it, where mm -hmm. do you see yourself from, you know, obviously you've done a lot of things mm -hmm. and, and that you felt God has put on your heart to do. Mm -hmm. and, and I've been along, I've been along your journey, you know, for a season as well. Mm -hmm. But where do you see yourself at this age? And where do you see the future of Grape Tree and mm -hmm. your position with Grape Tree? Mm -hmm. Grape, Grape Tree has become a nonprofit. Okay. So we're no longer for profit record label. We're, we're a non profit ministry. Okay. And it's music based still. And uh, I didn't know until last year when, when I was saying God told me, look at the vision. But I'm a mainstay, man. I believe this is where I'm going to be at. Mm -hmm. uh, ain't no such thing as, you know how your gospel orders, they around, right? Mm -hmm. But here are your Jacksons and, and the Shirley Caesars. You know, they passed, but you got, Shirley Caesars ain't passed, but. Your gospel artists, they're around, mm -hmm. you know. I, I may be the first mainstay as a gospel hip-hop artist mm -hmm. to where your kids and their kids still listen to something, either me or something that came from me. Yeah. I think I've arrived to where I mean, I believe God got me in a place where I'm supposed to uh, cultivate artists, man, mm -hmm. and keep putting out music for God, man, I, so. I believe that, and I'm glad, I'm thankful that you're in this space, man, like, you know, when I when I have people on, I like to always end with giving you your flowers. Appreciate like, it. Like, man, I really believe, like, you helped pioneer a lot of this gospel rap, man, and a lot of people don't know about you, that, yeah. and I hope that on this show they'll learn about a little your history and, and, yeah. and dive into what Grape Tree Records has to, yeah. Please to bring, do. man. You Please know, I feel do, like man. you're going to do some great things with that yeah. because you've, you've helped develop me without yeah. from afar God, and bro. when I was in your life, you know, for that it, season. You my brother, man. I yeah. mean, it's, it's, it was fun. still is fun. Yeah, man. oh, yeah. I, mean, I love... It ain't nothing like a good song to me, man. I mean, yeah, I can yeah. listen to some good music and forget about my bills. Yeah, yeah, and, me too, me too. And who trying to put me in jail, who, yeah, whatever. It's just yeah. like, yeah. like, man, ain't nothing like it, bro. Yeah, ain't nothing like it, man. Yeah. I, you know, and I also learned, though, it's, it's nothing like better than when you're doing something that you feel called to. I've now developed this, this uh, what should, how should I put it, mindset, should I say, that God don't want me out here broke. Nah. I, I don't nah. believe that, man. I nah. believe that God wants me to, because I became a better man when I became stable, right. mentally, physically, right. and spiritually. <laughs> right. And see, a lot of people like to put the, the spiritual thing, oh yeah, man, we gotta grow in spiritual, grow with God. Yeah. But when I started, when I created my nonprofit, God, yeah. uh, God Body International, yeah. my wife and I, we believe that, you know, my wife is big on finances yeah, and yeah. getting her finances in order. Yeah. We believe that we should be spiritually fed, right. mentally fed, right. physically fed, right. and financially fed. That's right. Right. We need all of those things to develop, you right. know, 
into the whole person that God is calling us to be. Man, we, as black people, we grew up broke, bro, and yeah. I, I didn't understand it was such thing as financial assault, right? Mm -hmm. if, if, I, if, I'm, if I have some authority in your life and I'm cheating you out of my, your money, that's like hitting you. That's like a physical assault. That's a right. financial assault, man. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, as black people, we've been financially disenfranchised and insulted Mm -hmm. All our lives that we think is is godliness, mm -hmm. <laughs> or, it, or is married to godliness. Right, right. But nah, man, I, I ain't never seen God do nothing raggedy, man. No, nobody's lives, you know. Jesus had a still thirty, you know. Jesus had a treasure room, man. I mean, what? It ain't, you know. God don't want us broke, bro. He right. wants us to provide. He 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 wants us to understand that money is not our God, but at the same time. Uh, he don't want us broke, bro. It's a tool. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel more, I'm, I'm thankful to God that I can say I've given away a lot more than I do for myself. Here's what I will say about money, though. Some people believe God needs their money mm -hmm. or I got to do this for God or it's not going to happen. And that's erroneous. What I learned is God does nothing with natural power. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Man, you say, man, we finna go out here and lift up this car for God. God, like, I don't need y'all natural help. Right. By the time we get out there, it's a, a crane picking that mud up. Mm -hmm. And some dude's like, oh, man, I don't know why I was supposed to pick this up. And we wind up doing the sinner's prayer with him. He does nothing with natural power. Anything, God don't, he don't do anything. He's a supernatural God, so he does nothing with natural power. So, man, God wants you blessed. To bless others. Right, right. What he's doing for you, we don't know how he gets that done, right? Mm -hmm. You might have a million dollar vision out there and you think, man, I got to make a million dollars. No, God does nothing with natural power. He, he, he if you got to make a million dollars, it's for whatever. But when God comes, I always tell people this, he'll discuss the what with you, but the when and how. Mm -hmm. He reserved that to himself. Mm -hmm. He'll never, he don't ever tell you when and how. Mm, that's good. Yeah, it's, it, he sure don't. Nah, <laughs> he'll tell you now, and mm -hmm. it's now, but two days ago, he ain't going to say, in two days, Kurt, I'm gone. Yeah. He might say that, but like when you in prayer or you in like, God, I, I need a woman, uh, when? he never tell you when and how. Yeah. He's like, yes, it's not good if you be alone, Kurt. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. Have faith and patience. You Ooh. wake up tomorrow. God, uh, have faith and patience. He, he probably going to have you meet her today, but he'll say faith and patience. Dude, well, he never discusses the when and how with you. Yeah, Because we'll screw it up. We would, but if we knew everything, we, we'll we screw out of, it up, bro. We out of there, man. We'll but, screw it up. But, man, I, I want to say, man, I don't want to hold up a lot of your time, uh, but I want to say thank you again for Absolutely, coming, bro. bro. I know Absolutely. you're my brother and my friend, but thank yeah. you for you know, sharing your, your heart with us. And your, and I'm going to have you back. You know yeah. what I'm saying? We got yeah. a lot we can talk oh, about. Yeah. I want to see oh, yeah. the, the, motion, the, man. the future of Grape, Grape Tree and what you're going to be doing. You know, and, and here on this show, like you said, we, we want to give flowers to the dream chasers, like the people yeah. that are out here Amen. boldly following yeah. what God is, what they feel God is calling them to. Right. And taking that risk and, right. and, and putting it in motion, man. And, right. you know, so I just want to say thank you again. Yeah. And before I log out, shouts out to my sponsor, uh, the Whitener Group, uh, thank you for allowing us to utilize this space. If you ever want to learn anything about business credit, if you want to get your finances in order, your LLC in order, your, if you want to get your credit repaired, uh, shouts out to Mr. Mark because he changed my life. He helped my wife and I, you know, increase our credit scores and get our business credit in order and uh, got us over 100K in business funding. So if you want to learn more about that, man, we're going to have a link at the bottom of this description so that you can click on, learn more about it. And help get your business in order, man. You know what I'm saying? Like it ain't nothing like having a dream, but it ain't. It's a better feeling putting it in motion and have your business in order. You, you know. So I just want to salute y'all for watching. Make sure y'all continue to hit subscribe. That's gonna help the channel to continue to grow. Help more people learn from what we put, uh, what, what the content that we're putting out. And again, I just want to thank y'all for uh, listening and thank you uh, for joining us again, Raz. Peace. Cause I am a king, the son of a king I'm blessed by the grace of the Lord Yeah, I'm holy, 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 holy I'm God's son, got me feeling holy, holy son of God